One mistake can ruin your entire life. Yes. Also known as her husband's revenge, this is my husband's worst mistake. I'm Jay Harang and I've wasted hours of my life watching terrible films. You should subscribe. This is Kent and his employee Amy. They're realtors and they're at some realtor conference thing in DC. The conference is really boring, so they decide to skip the dinner and go out on their own instead. And then they bang. But oh no, Kent and Amy are both married. Isn't that terrible? Not really. And this guy got a photo of them. Shit! Now, in real life, this photo proves absolutely nothing. But in this film, it may as well be a photo of him hanging out the back of her. <laughs> True. Anyway, back in Philadelphia, we meet Kent's wife, Sarah, and his daughter, Lucy. Hi. Lucy is about to graduate from high school and is going to college soon. Lucy's birthday is coming up, but she's worried because her mum and dad are always arguing. Poor thing. Back in DC, Kent and Amy agreed not to tell anyone about what they did. But when Amy gets home, her jealous and controlling husband, Brad, has a feeling that she's been up to something. She's like, oh, OK, I had sex with Kent from the office. How could you do this, Amy? You, you, you broke us. <laughs> So she's dead. The next morning at Kent's house... Did you have a good time? You know, it wasn't as boring as I thought it would be. Clearly not. Just to explain the family dynamic, it seems Kent isn't allowed to discuss work or look at his phone ever, or Sarah gets angry and they start arguing. Ooh, that can't be good. To make things worse, their daughter Lucy totally overreacts to any minor disagreement they have. Tonight they're going out to Lucy's favourite restaurant for her birthday, so that'll be fun. Maybe not. Sarah has a stupid little business with this other woman who adds nothing to the plot. They may as well have just made her an extra. Her name is irrelevant. And this is a Lifetime movie, so obviously they do interior design. Obviously. When Kent gets to work, his colleague Joe has some news for him. Amy Green. What about her? She died. At this point, Kent's probably thinking, oh, well, at least you won't be able to tell anyone what happened at the conference. But oh, no. The guy who took the photo at the conference is Kent's colleague, Miguel. Miguel is awful, by the way. He's such a smug prick. And he and Kent are going for the same promotion. But more on that later. Kent has another problem. Amy's husband, Bradley, has found out who he is. After work, when Kent gets to his car, someone's left a printout of the photo that you need to pretend is incriminating, when in fact it's just him and Amy stood waiting for a lift. <laughs> <laughs> that night, Kent and Sarah are in the restaurant waiting for the birthday girl to arrive. Sarah's like, Kent, there better not be any work chat tonight on Lucy's birthday. And he's like, OK, fine. But oh, no. Within seconds of Lucy arriving, Kent gets a text from Miguel saying, I guess you got the photo. Sarah's like, what's wrong, Kent? And he's like, uh, oh, sorry. Just found out one of my buyers has pulled out. Can we can we maybe hold it off until after dinner? Dad, hello. And this is such a problem that Lucy storms out. Whatever. Please, Luce. Okay, just wait. I will drive. Yeah, this is pretty much what Lucy does. Gets in a mood, says, ugh, whatever, and storms off. So yeah, that's dinner ruined. The next day at the office, Kent goes to see Miguel. I was looking for you. So you could admit to being a lowlife? You messed up. Not me. You don't know anything. I think that photo says it all. Does it? No. This is shit. Anyway, Miguel's like, they're never going to make you partner, Kent. Amy's husband is selling their house and his lawyer gave me the listing. Not you. Well, that's too bad. Because now he has to work with a low life. When Kent gets home that night, he tells Sarah about what happened with Amy and Sarah tells him he has to move out. Lucy hears all this from upstairs, so she cries. The next day, Amy's husband Brad has tracked Sarah down and goes into her shop saying he needs some interior design. So she gives him her card and he says he'll be in touch. After work, Sarah finds a printout of the photo on her car. I just found a souvenir of you and Amy. I can't believe that guy. So Kent goes round to Miguel's house and threatens him. Miguel tells Kent that he has security cameras everywhere, so Kent leaves. Hey, Kent. Drive safe. That night, Kent explains what he did in DC to Lucy. She's not happy at first, but when Kent promises to take her to a college campus tour, she's over it. So the next morning, she tells Sarah to let her dad move back in. But Sarah's like, no. That night, Brad calls Sarah and says he wants to meet about interior design tomorrow. Somehow, they go from discussing shelving and stools to his wife being dead and her being recently separated. Brad asks Sarah out for a drink, and she agrees. That night, before his date with Sarah, Brad has broken into one of Kent's listings and messed around with the furnace. Lucy 
is staying at Kent's tonight because they need to get on the road early for the college campus tour. But oh no, Kent gets a call from Joe. There's something wrong with the furnace and there's no way the open house can go ahead if it's like this. Seriously, Dad? Honey, I have... Whatever. Lucy. So yeah, Sarah has to leave work early so she can take her. Kent's really miserable, so that night he goes to a bar. While he's there, this woman comes in and starts kissing him so that this mystery figure can take a photo. Is it Miguel? Is it Brad? Who cares? This is shit. Oh, it doesn't look like it's Brad because he's over at Sarah's house drinking wine and laughing. But oh no, Lucy has come home. She's angry because she's an American teenager in a Lifetime movie and Brad's not her real daddy. So when Brad leaves, Lucy tells Sarah she's going to go and stay at her dad's house as she doesn't want to interrupt her sexy time. Sarah's like, that's not what's going on. And Lucy's like, Ugh, whatever. And storms off. Lucy has decided that she hates Brad and she's going to check him out online. I didn't hear that. But yeah, it's, it's good. Do that. The next day at work, Kent's boss is telling him that if he wants the big promotion, he's going to have to forget about this feud and start working with Miguel. He agrees, but surely it's not going to be easy. Look what a smug twat Miguel is. Yep. The next day, Sarah gets a text from an unknown number with a picture of that woman kissing Kent at the bar the other night. Underneath it, it says, how long will you keep believing him? What else is he lying about? Sarah calls Kent and tells him how disgusting she thinks he is. So Kent goes to confront Miguel. You want a photo? Why? I'm cheating on your wife again? <laughs> Having some barfly grab me? What are you talking about? Miguel's like, I didn't do that. And Kent's like, whatever, Miguel, I'm going to get you back. Over at Sarah's house, Brad is creeping around outside and cuts her power off. Then he calls her, and when she tells him about the power, he's like, oh, I'll come round and fix it. Smart. So after he's done that, they drink wine and laugh together. The next morning, Brad is following Kent. Why? No idea, but that's what's happening. Kent suddenly starts thinking, hmm, maybe it wasn't Miguel who did the setup. So he calls Lucy. He asks her if she's found anything out about Brad online, and she's like, yeah, he seems normal but he asks her to keep digging. Cut to Miguel, who's at Brad and Amy's house getting ready for the open house. But uh-oh, here comes Brad in all black clothes in broad daylight and he stabs Miguel. No, 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 no! So he's dead. Good. Later, Kent gets a call from Joe saying Miguel has the door locked at the open house and he's not answering calls. Kent's like, ugh, Miguel's such a shit realtor. I'll go around and see what's going on. When he gets there, he sees Miguel lying there dead and calls the police. This isn't going to look good for Kent because everyone knows he hates Miguel. He tells her about what's happened and she feels really sorry for him. And she starts to think, oh, I like Brad, but I love Kent. <laughs> Later, when she's FaceTiming Brad, he's like, yeah, Kent probably did it. He lied about the affair. He's probably lying about this too. Sarah's like, what? I think I'd know if Kent was a killer. Then this police officer comes round. Regular viewers of this channel will recognise him as the drunken dad with a massive forehead from webcam cheerleaders. Yes, of course. In this, his name's Detective Phillips and he's ridiculous. He gets his phone out and shows Sarah and Lucy a photo of the murder weapon and asks if they recognise it. And oh no, it looks like a similar knife is missing from their kitchen. Lucy's like, yeah, but everyone's got that knife. And he's like, yeah, but the murder weapon has your dad's fingerprints on it. <laughs> My dad wouldn't kill anybody. No, he wouldn't. And later that night, Kent is arrested. The next day, Sarah's telling Brad about what's happened. He's like, I'm a lawyer. I'll represent him until you can find your own lawyer. And Sarah's like, wow, Brad, that's brilliant. When Kent calls from prison, she tells him that her friend Brad is going to be his lawyer. He's like, um, I'm not sure about this. And she's like, shut up, Kent. He's the only option. And here he is. Kent's like, you're Sarah's friend, aren't you? Full disclosure, we're dating. Kent's like, yeah, all right, Brad. Brad starts going on about how upset Sarah is about the cheating and suggests that she might think he did kill Miguel. I mean, she probably believed that you weren't a philanderer, right? I'm not a philanderer. I love the word philanderer. Anyway, that meeting's gone pretty badly. Lucy's not too happy with this appointment either. That's the best we can do for this first step, yes. She's like, uh, whatever. When Brad calls Sarah, he's like, yeah, sounds like Kent did it. She's like, what? No, he didn't. And he's like, yeah, but he lied about the affair. What else is he lying about? Sarah thinks that question sounds familiar, and yes it does. It was in the text she got from the unknown number a few days ago. Meanwhile, Lucy has discovered that Amy was Brad's wife. At last. She tries to call her mum, but she doesn't answer, so she calls Detective Phillips and tells him what she's found out, but it looks like it could be too late. Brad has broken into Sarah's and is forcing her to take a load of tablets so that people think she's off herself. Mom? <laughs> oh. 
Then the police come round and arrest Brad. Detective Phillips is like, oh yeah, sorry for being a knob. I'll let your husband out when I get back. Weird, weird. An unspecified time later, we see Lucy getting ready for a graduation. Kent and Sarah aren't back together, but they're happy. Yeah. And that's the end of the film. So until next time. Thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe. And please consider joining my Patreon. There's a link in the description. Thank you.